it's a very special day because it is album release day, and we're so excited to have her. So let's hear it for Lauren Daigle. Oh my gosh, oh, thank, you. thank you. Well, hi everybody. How are you doing? It's album release day. We just did a little jump in the back like this. We were just getting our energy up, and then it was like, no, no, stop jumping and get on stage. <laughs> anyway, here what we are. are. You, what are you feeling on a day like today? Is it relief? Is it stress? Oh, oh no, not stress. Uh, it, irony, um, can I be really transparent? So we played this game last night called Linky. Has anybody ever played Linky? Okay, so th so many people do so many different things when their record comes out, right? Me, I'm like, I really want to play a board game. <laughs> So we stayed up till 2.30 in the morning playing this game <laughs> called Linky. So I am, uh, I'm honestly so excited. I love ringing in like special things like that. Just being with my family, uh, bringing everybody together. It was a lot of fun. My family, my friends, everyone was there. And then, um, yeah, we had a show last night. Yeah. We had our album release party. Some people were there. <laughs> oh. It was so much fun. And uh, yeah, so on a day like today, I'm just, I'm excited. And this Genuinely isn't excited. even all of it. Like we're going to be getting more songs. Oh yeah. This how is did just you part one? How did you decide which songs were going to go in this first part, this first release? Oh, that is a great question. I remember it being a lot about the sequ sequencing. Like, how did they fall next to each other? Which ones felt really good next to each other? Um, it's not the you know how sometimes there's like a part A and then a part B that was like an afterthought that doesn't mean as much. This is not that. This is actually one body of work. Um, but I had this idea of soul and spirit, like writing songs for the soul, writing songs for the spirit, and then writing songs from the soul, writing songs from the spirit. And I, I categorized them um, under the, those two categories, soul and spirit. And the more we started writing, the more we started realizing, wait, there's an even amount of songs on each side. It was kind of weird. I, I didn't do that on purpose. It was very subconscious. And so um, when we saw that, we were like, oh, we should break the record up into two parts. So, yeah, it's kind of how it happened. How does the, that work then? Like, is there a second part that comes later or? Yeah. Okay. There's another to, one coming to later. To be announced? To be announced. Okay. So this is like the very first. So I was sitting with Julie uh, Greenwald and she said to me, I know this is like cutting the Mona Lisa in half, <laughs> but would you be interested in cutting your record in half? Because it was a very long record. And she said, you know, we just sat here and listened to this, the entire thing top to bottom, and it took us two hours. So she said, I, if you know me, I am a records person. I love listening from the top down. I love listening to how the songs flow together. What's the story that the artist is trying to tell? Um, and I know singles are a thing, right, where you just go and listen to one song at a time, but I'm, I'm just an albums person. I'm still old school. And so I remember her looking at me and saying, you know, Two hours for a listen is a long deposit from people. Like, I don't know if, I don't want this to get lost in the wash. And the more I started thinking about it, the more I was like, yeah, I don't want songs like 15 to 19 to just get like the glazed over eye <laughs> because everybody's like, I have music, I have music fatigue, you know? Um, so yeah, she said, would you be interested in cutting it into two parts? And I said, yeah, being able to give fans that have waited for five years two records, that sounds amazing, mm. yeah. So that's how it happened. Were you also just at Target? How did you know? I mean, you might have done a little <laughs> live, but I thought that was so cool. Was yes. the one here on Empire? Uh, yeah, around the corner. Around the corner. Like, that's how, gotta be the where, one, right? I don't, which one was it? I don't know. <laughs> if it's <laughs> somewhere close by. Yeah. It was close. It was like uh, the one that you have to take the escalators to get to the second floor. West Hollywood. West Hollywood. Oh. West Hollywood? 7100. Wow. Uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. Do you still get a okay. rush? <laughs> 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 do you still get a rush seeing your album in this especially oh, today yeah that was genuine me showing up and be like oh my gosh these are here they my team said it would be really fun if you go into target and like look at the records and i was like they have them in the store <laughs> <laughs> they're like yeah absolutely but i thought you know they might only have a couple just because uh everything is so digital now but no they have them uh, they had a whole bookend full of them that's exciting. Yeah, that's and I know sweet. this is a self-titled album. Yes. And I love, because I've, I've watched some of your interviews about how that process came about. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to explain, kind of, I love how you're like, I, for two years, right? Yes. You just didn't know what to name it. Yes. I didn't have a title for two years. We'd been working on the record. And I was at dinner with two of my friends. And they came to the, uh, we were in the parking lot about to leave. 
They're like, hey, Lauren, give us a quick update on your record. W what are you going to name it? And I said, I don't know. It's kind of weird. After two years, I still don't have a, a title. They were like, well, we know why. I was like, why? They said, it's because it's supposed to be self-titled. I said, oh, guys, come on. Like, You only get one shot to do a self-titled album, OK? <laughs> and it can look a little self-indulgent, uh, if you will, <laughs> naming a record after yourself. I was like, but let me go in and kind of dive into this. And they said, there's just so much of you that is actually reflected on this record. Um, it's like kind of this beautiful growth that you've uh, experienced in the studio. I was very hands-on in this project. I got to be really creative with my producer and he listened to my ideas and some of them he was like, that's great. And then others, he's like, mm, that's just, I don't think that's gonna work out. <laughs> uh, and so it was just really great to get to be so expressive in the studio and just learn more things about myself. These songs really pulled me out um, of just a season of, uncertainty and I feel like I needed these songs to be elements of hope for me as well so they're like you need to go in and just make it self-titled it is what it is so that's what it is since it is so personal was there a song or is there a song on the album where you thought I don't know if I can release this oh yeah well there's one specific on the second one that I was like oh I don't know about this <laughs> my manager is laughing because she knows exactly which one it is <laughs> Um, so there's one on the second record that's coming out, and I'll just say it starts with an S. Okay. Oh. So when <laughs> mark that out. <laughs> Little spoiler alert. <laughs> Nobody you know. Well, I when I was listening to the album earlier today, I think my favorite just at the first listen is Saint Ferdinand. Oh yay! And the lyric that stuck out to me was, "But I know there's a purpose in the struggle when it all goes wrong, mm -hmm. and when things are going wa wrong, and you're searching for." that purpose and you don't see it yet because you're in it what do you do personally because m having met you a couple times you are like i told them you are like a hug in human form uh -huh. just like asmr for the soul yes so Go when on. you are struggling and when you are down is there a trick is there something that you do to kind of bring out that bring yourself out of that struggle? oh yeah absolutely well there's two things one i read the bible so i just sit there with the scripture and i'm like okay god I, you have what I need, and I just don't, I'm not full right now. I feel empty. Can you come and just meet me in this? That's one thing. Um, the other thing I do is I get friends around me who know me well, who can say, hey, this is how, don't, don't worry, this is who you are. Just stay focused on what is at hand. And I think that's really, community is so important. Um, I know in this age where everything is moving 900,000 miles an hour, I grew up in Louisiana, and let me tell you, a village definitely raised the kids, you know what I mean? It was the grandmother, the great-grandmother, the auntie, every single person. And so if you were acting up on the street, like if you were messing around riding your bike in places you shouldn't be riding your bike, there was going to be a grandmother around the corner that was going to go get you get you out of wherever you were. They weren't going to call your mama. It wasn't anything like, I'm going to call your mama, let her know. No, I'm coming after you right now. You're going to go get get yourself together. And I think there's something about that kind of community that has changed over the years, right? It's just different. Life doesn't look quite that, s that way anymore. Um, but finding people that can really sit in your story with you and sit in the process with you and learn and grow, um, it's really important. Yeah. So I would say the Bible and is it community. Is it true that you've ta you take some time off social media too? Oh, yeah. I don't even have it on my we phone. I was telling her about that. We we're both so jealous. Oh, <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. It, right? Okay, there's this thing called a digital detox that, have you heard about this? Yeah, it's, it's life changing, but it's really good. <laughs> um, so you just take a, an alarm clock, you put it by your bed. Because how easy, you know. Because the second you use your phone for an alarm, it goes off, you pick up the phone, there's already 10 notifications that you have to respond to. Your brain doesn't even have a second to like wake up and like enjoy the day and sit and have a cup of coffee and read or stare out the window. You're just automatically in this cycle. And I was like, I, got, I need to figure out how to change this for my life because I feel like I can't keep up. Like I feel like I'm always, I would wake up every day and already think that I'm behind. 
And that's just, it's not a way to live. Um, and I've, I've found myself, I'm actually more responsive to the things that need my attention if I give myself just that window in the morning. And then same, like you don't bring your phone in your bed. That's just the rule. Like your phone does not come to your bedroom. Like Oopsies. That, know. Yeah. <laughs> like leave it in the kitchen, let it charge. It's really weird. Are you ready for this? This is weird. This will teach you how you're connected to this ridiculousness. I was in um, a hotel room a couple nights ago and I started this digital detox that night. And I remember, this is unbelievable, but I remember I had to put my phone across the room because we're, you're not supposed to like sleep with, it's not supposed to be like on your nightstand. Like the whole point is to have separation. There's a place of rest and it's your bedroom. And you can actually turn off when you go in your bedroom and leave your phone in another room. Well in a hotel room, it's just one room, right? So I, I was like, I'm gonna leave it across the room. Do you know that at, in the beginning, I sat there with like a little bit of a, like nervous. Like I was like, there was some fear. Like, but what if something happens in the middle of the night and I can't grab my phone and call someone? It's literally from here to the <laughs> wall. Like, it's not like it was, and it makes you realize, wow, I've kind of put some trust in this thing that I just probably should have never put into this in the first place, you know? Um, but yeah, it'll teach you a lot. Digital detox, I highly recommend it. I don't even think about my phone. Like it's only, it's literally been five days and I don't even think about it being next to me when I sleep. It's like, I left it in another room last night. I forgot to even charge it. Like my brain just went and I completely adopted the alarm clock. It's like my friend, like when I go and set the alarm for what time I have to wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh my gosh, this feels so nice. <laughs> this is like what it was like in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta try that. It's good. Okay, sorry for the long tangent. <laughs> no, on the no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> we did have a question from the audience. They yeah. would like to know what is your favorite song on this album, on the new mm. album, and what were you going through when you wrote it? Wow, that's a great question. I love the song Kaleidoscope Jesus. That's one of my favorites on the record because it's so fun and it's colorful. And I grew up in my life when I was a little kid. Um, I would go visit my Aunt Tracy. She lived down... She lived like an hour away from us. And I remember I would go and play with these kaleidoscopes that she had sitting on her, her uh, coffee table. And I would just get lost in that world and think, how do they make these things? What, what did they do to get this so beautiful? And every single time, it's a different image. Like you can't recreate the same in image in a kaleidoscope because the thing, the crystals at the end are changing and the light fractions are changing. There's just so much that changes with each twist and turn. And I feel like that's like this representation of life. There's so many twists and turns that can come along the way. But if you keep the right perspective, if you're looking through the right lens, it can actually be a beautiful picture. And so that, that song, I just, I love so much. It's called Kaleidoscope Jesus. I know you're from Louisiana. Yes. I have never been. I know, I know. Girl. Have you been? Never. <gasps> never. Okay. Well, okay. How, we'll how many do people have I not been to Louisiana? Extravaganza I love there. this. Okay, half the room has been though. That's good. Half has oh. it. What, what do we need to see and do and eat? Let's say we had a weekend yes. in Louisiana. Okay, weekend in Louisiana, I would say if you're in New Orleans, because there's different places, but if you're in New Orleans, I would say, oh, this is really hard. How do you narrow down? Because um, you're I from Lafayette, right? I'm from Lafayette. Okay. If you go look at the art on Royal Street, that would be fun. Like taking a good stroll down Royal, get lost in the French Quarter. There's always something to do there's always a festival going on go see a festival go listen to some live jazz it's amazing and the thing i would say to eat there's this there's the most incredible shrimp and grits at Ca cafe amelie that's what i would eat they put corn mock shoe on top of the shrimp and grits and what? that's like a one like nobody else that? does that what is that corn mock shoe it's like a um bless you I don't it's <laughs> like a yeah 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 <laughs> love it um <laughs> corn maca chew um, okay so it's like this corn um dad how would you say it it's like a it's like a is it sweet it it's sweet and savory oh. okay. bell peppers yeah Ooh. it's like a um I don't how, what would you I just would just call it a mock shoe I don't know <laughs> what the uh it's just like a corn casserole almost. Okay. 
like a little casserole on top of the shrimp and grits. Yeah. It's so good. Like, you know when you put a casserole in and it you don't have any, like, topping? Like, there's no cheese on top. It's just the substance that's underneath. There's no cheese or breading on top. It's just what's underneath. Mm -hmm. That's what Kormakshu is. Okay. If it was, yeah. Okay. That's just, <laughs> this is going really, really well. No, it was um, very specific. So I'm, <laughs> I'm explaining these culinary arts very <laughs> nicely. We learned a new word. I learned a new word. Yeah. That was exciting. M-A-C-Q-U-E, <laughs> I think. C-H-O-U-X. Corn Makshu. Now, you have a tour also coming up. I know you're going to be back here in November. Yes, at, at the, the Crypto. Crypto. Yes. Oh, my God. Arena tour. Yeah. How are we feeling about that? I'm so excited. I'm so... I Honestly, we finished the Look Up Child world starting in arenas. We, we ventured down that train. But I feel like this is just going to be so different because... The one, the color, the amount of color, the amount of excitement, the stage, we just got the renderings back and it looks, I actually got tears in my eyes when I looked at it. We have this company here, it's called Silent House and um, the guy, his name is Parker. He's been with me for years and years and years but he um, joined Silent House a couple years ago and he was like, okay Lauren, this is it. We like took all the your notes and thoughts and whatever, but I want you to be really honest when you open these files. Tell me what you really think. And when I opened them, I just got tears. I was like, I don't know if I want to change anything. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. So it's going to be really colorful. There's going to be so much life and so much joy that just spills out from the stage. And I can't wait for people to come. It's going to be beautiful. Is there a song that you feel that the crowd responds to the most when you're out and you're performing? Ooh. Well, I mean, you say has uh, its thing, right? Um, that one's kind of a no-brainer just because so many people know it. And that's really special, getting to see people respond to a song. But I think Rescue is the one that I like. I love watching people interact with. It's just, you know that b behind every voice there's some sort of story connected, and that's really special to me. These constant chills talking to you. Oh, oh, <laughs> can you also God. be our life coach? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you just tell me what you need. Yeah. You know? Well, we're so happy for you. I know this is like, we are like, this is like Christmas today, oh, right? Is it like for your me, birthday, Christmas, the, New Year's yes, Day? Yes, for the release. Y'all, this is, okay, I woke up this morning. My family and friends, they were so precious. Uh, they were staying at a little Airbnb and they put, they had presents and flowers and all this stuff like set up and they surprised me. They were like, should we eat on the roof? I don't know if it's, it might be too hot to eat up there, you know, cause there's like a little rooftop thing. I, it might just be too hot to, I was like, no, it's going to be amazing. Let's go sit up there. They're like, oh, okay, I guess we have to. <laughs> and then we go up there and they had all this stuff set up. And it was just so sweet. It's like, these are the things that make these moments in life really special. It's not just celebrating your success or celebrating what you're able to make. It's celebrating it with the people that are next to you. And that, that was really, really, that was the moment that it all made sense. You know, that was the moment for me that, okay, it sank in, I just released a record, you know? Cause, cause it's been living in my Dropbox for a year. <laughs> so I, it's, I was telling them earlier, like, it's so weird, all of a sudden the clock strikes nine o'clock and everybody just has this thing that I've been having for the past. It's like, your brain doesn't really know how to deal with it. Like, wait, you can go listen to that song that I've been having to keep a secret for two years straight. It's, uh, it's very exciting. And I'm glad that I don't have to go through all the Dropbox trouble to find it. Now I can just go to, <laughs> to the radio station and- Or to Target. Look it up. Or to Target, <laughs> you know? It's, it's there and available. All right, well, are we ready to play some songs? I'm ready if y'all are ready. ready. Yeah, thank you. All right, welcome Lauren right. Daigle, new album, self-titled, and happy Friday, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> Keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the song? Of every high and every low I 
Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Thank you, thank you. Y'all spaces mean so much. Just the tears and the joy and all of it. It just, it fills me up. I had this one person tell me one time, Lauren, you can be excited about the music and everything, but that's just the seed. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what you mean, girl. <laughs> and she said, <laughs> she said, that's just the seed. We are the scatterers. And it's true. All of you have a part to play in this. It is, it's, it's your stories combining with this. It's just what you're able to give. It goes, it's a very much reciprocated thing. I see how these songs have impacted you and in turn your expression comes back and fills me up to keep writing and to keep being a part of this and it means the world. I'm so grateful um, just for the, yeah, it's a divine exchange. I'm so grateful for it. So anyway, this next one I absolutely love. Uh, I was in Target, of course, okay, so I love Target. 
Um, and I remember, oh wait, this is, okay, I'm going to say this thing again the other day. I was talking about this. James Corden has that carpool karaoke, right? And I think he was with Bruno Mars and Bruno Mars is like covered in Versace and all this stuff. And, uh, he was like telling James, yeah, you got to get this thing. You got to get this. Like, what, what does your wife wear? I'm sure she wears this kind of, kind of Versace. And he goes, um, no, my kids and my wife, they rock Target. <laughs> And I was like, come on, James Corden, make the world feel normal. I love it. <laughs> and so here I am in Target. And I remember um, I, I got this demo back from this co-write that I had done um, with this guy by the name of John Green and this female named Natalie Hemby. And she was amazing. He was amazing. But he has this UK thing about him because he's from the UK. And he really labored over these demo tracks. Now, if you know anything about demo tracks, like typically – with a demo, you just kind of do a piano vocal, maybe some synth stuff. It's really simple. And then um, you put a vocal on top, and that's just kind of like the rough sketch, if you will, of a song. And he said to me, hey, do you care if I like take this a little bit further? Do you care if I kind of really work on this? And I said, yeah, do your thing. Like, There's no harm, no foul. Just go for it, and I'll sing on whatever you build. And I came back, and he had this... Um, amazing track built with like strings on it which means he hired a string arranger to write the music hired the strings put the strings on there he had a choir on there he had built this thing it was so beautiful and I remember thinking oh my gosh so I'm in Target and I started screaming at the top of my lungs this is how I always wanted to sound like this is it when I was a little kid I was like this is what I dreamt of like that UK soul kind of thing and I love this song so much it's called Waiting, and here's the thing about waiting. Uh, I feel like with everything that's so fast nowadays, I, I was thinking about what is it like to just like actually wait, to sit in the lingering, and to, to feel the longing for something that you don't have yet. Like that thing is so healthy and so good, and I know everything is instant, and you can microwave an entire meal in four minutes, and everything is done all of a sudden, like you can throw a party, but... There's something really beautiful about the art of waiting. And um, this song has like a parallel of this love story, if you will, of waiting for somebody, whoever is in that season. But also then it, it goes into the bridge and it's like waiting for the day that Jesus will return, waiting for that triumphant entry, if you will. And how the world might be groaning right now, but an answer is coming. And there's something really beautiful about that. And I wait with joy. I wait with excitement. And um, yeah, so this is that song. It's called Waiting. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, the right one's gonna come along someday. Probably just getting in your own way. These are the things people try to say when they don't want you. That's what it feels like waiting for you. I'm giving up all the gifts that I could give. I'm throwing caution to the wind just to find out if I let it go. Will love ever return? Oh, when you wait, you always count and never should, but somehow doubt and wonder. What you got yourself into Times you turn anticipating All the while your heart is aching Knowing that the day is coming soon That's what it feels like Waiting for you That's what it feels like Waiting for you Waiting on, on a love like this 
sky waits for the sun. I'm the one who'll be waiting for you. If you know that, you can sing it. Waiting on, on a love like the sky waits for the sun. I'm the one who'll be waiting for you. Oh, yeah. Waiting on, on a love like the sky waits for the sun. I'm the one who'll be waiting for you. Oh, Who'll be waiting for you? Oh yeah, I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on. Oh, 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 oh. I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on. Mm. I'm the one who'll be waiting for you. Woo! Thank you. I love that song. I actually love this version. It's so, it's so, I like this. We should record this. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. I like it. It's got some movement to it, okay. My, m we just released a record today and I'm already dreaming of the entire acoustic record that can partner really well with this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, we could do these songs like stripped down. And my brain has been thinking about it. I'm like, um, hi, Atlantic. Yeah, hi, Century City. Yeah, I know. We just released a record today. Could we, I go into the studio tomorrow? Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, anyway, I love these songs so much. I hope y'all love them as much as I do. Uh, this is our last one. And it's one of my favorites. I wrote it with the one and only Jason Ingram. And um, he he wrote You Say With Me. He wrote Thank God I Do. I mean, yeah, Thank God I Do With Me. He wrote um, Rescue With Me. How Can It Be? So many. I also noticed this little trend about the songs that we write together. How Can It Be? Four words. Thank God I Do. Four words. <laughs> um, what's the, There was another one. Hold on to me. Four words. I'm like, golly, I can't get away from this thing. Anyway things you notice when you're just constantly looking at these uh these songs i'm so grateful um okay so jason and i here we are i'm sitting i'm getting ready the day before and i was like god give me a jason melody because he just has this thing where melodies can take off and soar and i i remember getting dressed in this i don't know who i'd be if i didn't know you i'd probably fall off the edge and I thought, well, that's awfully dramatic. <laughs> but it sounds kind of like something I would write with him. <laughs> and so I remember thinking, I'm going to go to the studio. I'll share this with him. But we will for sure change the words because it's just too extra. And we get in there, and he's like, oh, no, we're keeping these words. And I was like, oh, are we? You're my safe place, my hideaway. You're my oxygen. Come on, Jason. Like, this is so intense. And he was like, no, no, no. I think that we're on to something. And I'm so glad he did. He was like, we're, we're, just trust me with this. And um, I love this song so much. It, it actually became one of those songs that has taught me along the way as well. Like sometimes you have these songs that you write and you don't know necessarily how they will impact you also. And I remember I didn't have that whole like, thank God I do thing, you know, at the end where it says, thank God I do. And it's like, he take away. Uh, this is like <laughs> the album title tucked in the middle of uh, the song, but it's not in the chorus. Like typically the chorus is the moment that you get to have the album title. And he came up with that. And I remember the second I heard that, I looked at him and I was like, ooh, ooh, okay, we're on to something, okay. And it was one of the first songs that we wrote for the record and I love it so much. So this is Thank God I Do. Here we go. darkness 
trying to fight my fears alone so long alone I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you I'd probably fall off the edge I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go so keep me started breathing the weight is lifted here with you it's easy my head is finally clear oh there's nothing missing when you are by my side i took the long road but now i free With you, I'm home. One, two. I don't know who I'd be if I didn't know you. I'd probably fall off the edge. I don't know where I'd go if you ever let go. So keep me out in your way. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you, iHeartRadio. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Happy release day. Thank you. Thank you.